Dari di rumah. <laughs> Trust what you can have is. Raise for the jury. Okay, let me see. Next defense witness. Your Honor, the defense will call Karen Alexander, please. Okay. Come on up, the witness, stand up here, please. Raise your right hand before you sit down. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury the testimony about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Make sure you speak into the microphone. Good afternoon, Ms. Alexander. Hi. Will you please state and spell your last name for the record? Um, Karen Alexander, K A R E N A L E A L E X A N D E R. Um, where are you from? Bakersfield, California. And uh, what do you do for a living? I am a retired checker and recently went to work for Amazon. Okay. I understand you've also recently had a grandchild. Yes, I did. My first. Dawson. But yes. His name. How do you know Mr. Redwine? I know Mr. Redwine. I met him probably 10 years ago in Bakersfield. He was working at a job site and I met him in a bar. Um, are you a big drinker? No. Okay. Uh, when, after meeting Mr. Redwine, uh, did you spend time together in Bakersfield? Yes. He was um, staying at a La Quinta hotel in Bakersfield and we went out a couple times and he came to my house and some of the workers that were with him came to my house and barbecued, and um, he just hung out a lot. He did a lot of things. And after that job was completed in Bakersfield, or was it during the time the job was completed in Bakersfield, you got a chance to come visit? No, he was still working in Bakersfield at the time when I went to Durango. Okay. Um, and so you did have a chance to come visit him while, or in his, at his house in Durango or Viacito? Yes. And was it the one up by the lake? That, yes. Do you remember approximately the year? Uh, it's been probably 10 years, so 11 maybe or 12. Okay. And would you disagree with me if I said that Bakersfield job was 2012? No, because I don't remember the exact year. Okay. Was it the summer before Dylan went missing that you visited by Cedar? Yes. And when you visited Viacito, how long did you stay? Uh, we were there probably four or five days. It was a long weekend, so it was on a holiday. I can't remember Memorial Labor Day. Was there anyone there with you aside from just Mr. Redwine? Yes, Dylan came to visit. I, I wanted to talk about that in a moment, but first, um, when was the last time you have spoken with Mr. Redwine, if you remember? Oh, it's been years, uh, probably, I don't know how many years, it's been quite a while. Life change, you just lose track of time. Do you continue to have or, or have you maintained any interest in a romantic relationship with him? No. And 
and did you reach out to anyone to let them know you wanted to be involved in this case or were you clicking your heels to come to court? No, actually, um, when I heard that he was arrested, I talked with my son about it because I thought I could be a character witness. And uh, my son said, just, you know, think about it. So I prayed about it, and I told God that if it, it's meant to be, somebody needs to reach out to me, I'm not going to make the effort. And he reached out to me. This will uh, be apparent why I ask what may seem like a silly question now, but it will be apparent later. But do you know what Photoshop is? No. I've heard of it, and I know my son and my daughter do it, but I've never done it. So vaguely aware that it's something you do with computers? Something you do with photos, that's all I know, and computers or pictures or whatever. I've never done it. So are you able to say if you're Photoshopping something what, in fact, you're doing? Okay. so. Photoshop to me is putting pictures on something or uh, like multiple pictures on something. That's what I consider Photoshopping. I don't know how to Photoshop. I'm not that savvy. So to me, taking a picture off something and moving it on to like Facebook or Instagram and then maybe putting multiple ones, that's what I consider Photoshopping to me. So Photoshopping would be taking a picture from one place and putting it into your Instagram account, your Facebook account. Yeah. That's how I look at it, but I, that's how I do it. Or, and then the other, do you think it's combining pictures? Well, that's what I meant, like multiple. Like in a frame, you have one picture and you add another or two. To me, that's Photoshopping in the same frame. Like a collage? Yeah, yeah. Not making many photos into one photo? No. Ms. Alexander, switching gears a little bit here, have you been following this case? No. I haven't. I had not read up on it or seen anything on it. I heard actually on the news years ago when they found Bill and it was like on the national news. And then when he was arrested, I thought on the news, but I haven't been keeping up on it. There's nothing in Bakersfield. There's nothing on the news or in the papers. So you mentioned that you did, in fact, meet Dylan, and if I understood you correctly, it was summer of 2012. Yeah, well, whatever year, but yes, I did meet Dylan. And would it make sense to you that it was Memorial Day, early summer? Yeah, that or Labor Day, whichever one. <clears throat> I don't remember. Well, you described for the jury the child you encountered. What, what, what did you make of Dylan? Was he polite? Was he... When I first met Dylan, he was very quiet, but then he warmed up to me after a few days. But he was just a typical child. He liked to do stuff. Um, we, uh, I had just bought two handguns, 45s, and marked them. Let's take them back so you can shoot them. There's not a lot of places in Bakersfield to shoot. So we took the guns back, and Dylan asked if he could shoot the guns. So we went out way out somewhere, I don't know where it was, but um, he, Mark, which I laughed about, Mark made him put on his full face motorcycle helmet with the shield and would not let him shoot unless he had the shield on because he said if the butterfly kicked back and hit him in the head, Elaine would be, there'd be a lot of paperwork involved. So he didn't want any trouble with Elaine. But um, yeah, we just did stuff. We barbecued and we, uh, went out on the quad and we hiked up the mountain and we went shopping at the mall. Um, we just did normal stuff. He's, he's just like a normal kid like my son. Happy go lucky, would you? Yeah. How about, did you observe anything in him that caused you to think he was independent? Well, he was independent where he would like go off on the quad or to walk off or, you know, go for a walk or do stuff like that, independent like that. He, you know, he was self-sufficient, if that makes sense. While you were there, did he ever leave to go to a friend's house? I believe he left to go to a friend's house, and I don't remember if he walked or if he took off on the quad. Um, 
but he did not need to get a ride. Nobody ever took We never took him anywhere. No, and he never rode with anybody. Were there any occasions where he left Dad's house without departing on the four-wheeler? Honestly, I can't remember. Like I said, he walked off. There was a time he went for a walk, and then there was a time he took off on the quad. So I can't remember which was which. Did you get an opportunity to see how Mark and Dylan got along together? Yes. We played, uh, in fact, we, I don't know what we did that day. It might have been after we were shooting, but we went back to the house to barbecue, and we played football in the front yard, three of us, and had a lot of fun. What kind of dad was Mark to Dylan as you saw them together? Very attentive. Did you ever have an opportunity to see Dylan driving his dad's truck? We went to dinner one night. There was like a kind of like a log cabin looking restaurant and grocery store down the road from Mark's place. And so we were going to dinner down there and Dylan asked him if he could drive. And so Mark said, yeah, you can drive down the road and then drive us back home. So he was all excited. So we drove down the road to the restaurant. He wanted to eat really fast so he could drive back up the hill to the house. But yeah. He was just like a normal, normal child. Um, did you ever, in those days that you were there, see Dylan go fishing? I saw his pole, and I saw him leave, but I never really actually saw him take off and go fishing. I know he walked down to the, there's a, when you leave Mark's house and you go out to the right, if you go down the road and make a left, there's like a, I call it a creek or river. River, I don't know what it is, but there's something there that you can go and hit. Down by the bridge? Yeah, it's by a bridge. Did you have any reason to think that that's where Dylan had gone fishing? Well, that's the only place I really ever saw around there to fish, so that's where I would assume he would have went. Did he, did he walk? Yeah. How long was he gone for? Whenever he left, he'd be on for like an hour. Did he bring his fishing pole? Like I said, I saw the fishing pole in the house by the door, but I don't, you know, I didn't pay that much attention to what he went and did. So you don't know if he took a fishing pole or not? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not, it's not yeah. I don't know if he took it with him when he left, but I assume that's where he went when he went down the fish. <laughs> and you said that you saw Mark and Dylan throwing the football. Did you observe any playful roughhousing? Yeah. We were playing like tackle, um, you know, running back and forth. His yard was this way, not this way. So we were running back and forth because he had a covert type thing in the, like he drove over a little covert thing into his driveway. So you couldn't play that way. But yeah, they were, we were laughing. We had music playing and we were just barbecuing. He barbecued on his porch. So we were right out front. What else did, uh, or was there any baseball that you saw? We didn't play baseball. We just played with the football. Do you remember what time Dylan got up in the morning? <laughs> oh, yeah. Dylan slept on the couch in the front room, and I have a son, and Mark was very attentive to his son. And excuse me, we were going to go shopping into town, and it was like, I want to say, Saturday morning and uh, Dylan was asleep. He always was on the couch downstairs, and he watched Nickelodeon, and he watched Cartoon Network, and he played with, I want to say it was a PlayStation. Could have been an Xbox, I'm not sure. But he would play, and he'd be up late at night, so he'd be sleeping, and we'd get up to go, and Mark would just be walking around with a cigarette and a cup of coffee, hollering, Dylan, get it, boy, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go, get up, Billy boy. And it took him probably two hours to get up. He didn't make it to the mall until noon. Did I hear that right? He was sleeping on the couch? Yeah. Would you recognize an image of Mr. Redwine poem if I were to put it on the screen behind you? Oh, yeah. Maybe you published and did it one Go ahead.
Okay. Yes. Can you indicate for the jury where Dylan was sleeping? Okay. I'll, I'll have you have a seat for a moment too. I've got a few more questions, and then I'll be standing in if you don't mind. Um, are, are you familiar with an organization called CDI? No. You don't have you have you ever heard of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation? No. Has anybody from law enforcement ever approached you with photographs to talk to you about them? No. Was there an occasion when you were at Mr. Redwine's house and you observed Dylan to have a, a blood button, a, a, an event where he was bleeding? The night that we barbecued at Mark's house, he had brought in the meat and Dylan was cutting the meat and cut the end of his finger. So Mark came in, bought him a Band-Aid, and we went and sat down on the love seat. And he had dropped, he was dropped, dropping blood as he went to it. Not a lot, but he had a paper towel on it like this. And then Mark went in the bathroom, which is just right off the bedroom, got a Band-Aid, and came over and put the Band-Aid on his finger, and then we went back to eating. Will you use that pointer and show the jury which part of the couch or love seat that Dylan was at? So Mark bandaged Dylan. Yes. And when you were at Mr. Redwine's house, was he just getting in town from working in the field? Yes. We had just left Bakersfield and drove from Bakersfield back to Durango. And when we got into Durango, he had to go in the next morning and take in payroll and all of his work and timesheets. So he went into Durango, took in all that stuff, and I stayed at the house. Did uh, he seem tired? as he was getting into Durango. Yeah. He was tired. Yeah, it was a long drive. We drove straight through. And so errands in the morning he had to run to town. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned this, but um did you pay any attention to what television programming Dylan was tuning into? Yeah. We watched I sat and watched with him on that low seat on the T V Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. We watched SpongeBob and a bunch of cartoons, and then he would turn it off. And I played a little bit with him on I can't remember Xbox or the PlayStation, one or the other, and we played games. And that's when. Um, There's no question right now. Wait for a question. Okay. Is Alexander, do you remember the FBI coming to your home? Yes. And did it happen two, on two different occasions? Yes. Do you remember what you were doing on the second occasion when the agents came to your house? <laughs> Babysitting. I have a little, took care of little two-year-old. I had four of them. And um, do you remember speaking with the FBI and saying that you thought, well, let me ask you this. Was that in approximately April of 2013? I don't know. I... I don't remember when it was. I know it was back in that time frame. Would it refresh your recollection to take a look at the at a report? I never saw the report, so yeah. No coach, you may. Four 
four, sixteen, and thirteen. I I guess. Okay, so my sometimes best. people can read reports and sometimes they can't. Mm -hmm. Is that how that works in this courtroom? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just I never saw the report, any of the reports from the FBI. Does it refresh your recollection as to the approximate time when they visited you? Yeah. Do you remember telling the FBI that you thought, oh, he doesn't get to just simply ask her what she remembers? No, no, about. I agree that you need to ask a question first and see if she remembers, and then you may be able to get it in, you may not, but you need to ask the question. Do you uh, remember what you told the FBI about Elaine? Would it, refresh your, would it refresh your recollection to take a look at what they wrote? Um, yeah, but I don't remember what I said because, like I said, I never saw well, it. Well, voice is supposed to work. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's fine. It, I don't. You, don't. you don't have to have written it. Okay. okay. You can look at it, see if it helps you remember what the conversation was. Okay. If it independently refreshes your memory, then you can testify about it. If not, then there's something else Ms. Moran can do about it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Maybe double back to that. Do you remember a phone conversation you had with Mr. Redwine from a bowling alley? Yes. Do you remember what you talked to him about? Yes. Did you make any suggestions to him? Yes, I did. What was that, what was that suggestion? He had to do so. an out-of-court statement that she made at that time. What's the purpose of this, Mr. Uh, she's subject to cross-examination, and she can remember what she said. And it's available for her. Well, that's your statement. It's an out-of-court statement. I assume it's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. That's why I asked you what it was offered for. That she said this thing. Um, whether it's true or not, isn't really something we're trying to get at. It's just that she made the remarks. Come on up here. I beg your pardon. This is going to take a moment. I have 30 seconds. When you had those, um, I'm sorry, how old did you say those children were that we were looking after? Two. And there were how many of them? Four. Well, I don't know. It may be relevant, but he hasn't gone far enough for me to make a decision. So go ahead. And they were present when the FBI agents came? To yes. Use. Very <laughs> clear that those kids might have, were you the only adult looking after them? Yes. Were you distracted? Yes. After... Dylan went missing, and most, more specifically, after it was known that Dylan was deceased, did you keep in touch with Mr. Redwine? Um, not a lot, yes. We talked. Um, but did that contact eventually fall off? Yes, it did. Was it apparent to you that Mr. Redwine was upset? Very upset. Was it obvious to you that Mr. Redwine loved his child? Yes, he loved Dylan very much. Talked about him all the time. So you heard about Dylan in, in Bakersfield? Yes. When we were in Bakersfield, he'd come to my house and we would barbecue. And he would sit on the patio. I lived next door to my parents. And my parents, my mom would come out and sit with us and he would talk about Dylan because I had a son. 
after it was known that Dylan was deceased, what was Mr. Redwine's emotional state? He was upset, but Mark not one to show a lot of emotion. He just isn't that tight. I would bawl like a baby. Um, he was upset. You could tell. Um, I, I think the prosecutor is going to have some questions for you. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Champagne. Thank you. Um, you say, I'm sorry, it's Karen Alexander? Mm -hmm. You told the FBI that your name was Karen Lee Kennedy, also, right? I'm divorced. I'm you gave them two separate names, though, right? Yes. I gave them my names, Karen Obar and Karen Kennedy. They asked me what my married names were. Right, because in the first FBI report, you told them Karen Obar Alexander, uh -huh. right? And then I don't they, remember. Then they came back, and you told them Karen Lee Kennedy. I don't remember. You don't remember? Would it help to look at the report? Um, I never saw the report, so yes. Would you have given them those names? Well, actually, my full name is Karen. That's not the question. Did you give them two separate I names? I don't remember. You don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you went on the Dr. Phil show on behalf of Mark Redwine, yes. you told them Karen Obar. That's my maiden name. Right? And then when Elena Hall asked you if your real name was Karen Alexander, you denied it, didn't you? No. Objection, Your Honor. Um, hold on. Hold on. Um, what's your objection? I guess hearsay that uh, a cross examination by Elaine Hall of Ms. Alexander. I'm not sure what the. Uh, that would not be hearsay. Uh, Mr. Champagne, give her some time to answer the question before you oh. ask your next one. Right. I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. I apologize. Go if ahead. I may approach, Your Honor. Uh, these are the reports from the FBI. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Here. Okay. You see the date up there, December 5th, 2012? Yes. Yeah. And your name, what do you do with that? Karen O'Bar Alexander. And this is the one from April 16th, 2013. And what's the name you gave there? Mr. Champagne, that's the same thing I was upset with Mr. Ryan for. You guys have been yelled at all the time. They're not supposed to just read the report, okay. not to the jury. There, right? Does that help you remember the name you gave? Honestly, I don't remember. I'm sorry. That's fine. But the report says, Karen. No, well, no, no, she doesn't. Now it's a prior consistent statement, right? That could come through through this agent. Yeah, I guess you could. You and you've already asked if that's the name you gave. You'd have to. You'd have to put it in that way. I think Mr. Moran's correct on that. All right. So, when you were on the Dr. Phil show, you gave the name Karen Obal, right? I guess, yes. I don't remember. Okay. And then when you were talking with Elaine Hall, she asked you if he, it was Karen Alexander. I don't ever remember her asking me that. Would it be helpful to look at the transcript in the Dr. Phil show? If it's there, it's there. I just don't remember saying it. I showed you that transcript. Would it help us refresh uh, your recollection? You can show me, but like I said, I don't remember saying that. I really didn't talk to her that much. Your Honor, object is to relevance. It's not uncommon to have a married name and uh, Mr. Mr. Champagne, what's the relevance? I'm trying to find out who this person is. For, hold on a second. It's, it's way different in a courtroom than normal, Ms. Alexander, so hang on just a second. I know. Okay. So what was your response? Judge, I'm just trying to establish identity. I think it certainly goes to credibility. Well, if one's a married name and one's not, I, I, I don't understand where you're going with it either. We have three different names, Judge. I can probably clear that up. No, don't, don't say anything until there's a question for you. Um, you can approach and show or see if it refreshes or memory. That's what, that's what you're requesting, correct? So go ahead. Okay, counsel, this is page 4452. <clears throat> About my name? Feeling of what she shouldn't. I don't remember the conversation, but I can clear up the name. <clears throat> so you were uh, dating Mark Redwine out in Bakersfield, is that right? Yes. And 
you were dating him for several months, right? Yes. He actually moved in. Is that correct? Objection, Your Honor, as to relevance. Okay. If there's going to be any further what, what testimony would, on this. Why wouldn't that be relevant, showing the nature of the relationship? Well, I'd like to discuss it at the bench if, uh, if this is going to go any further than than that. All right, come on up. You are going Judge, to I don't, think, I don't think this is necessary. I'm just trying to establish the relationship between Is it going to go any further was my no. question. Okay. Then we're, go ahead and ask your next question. Okay. And you said you spent a lot of time together out there, right? Yes. Okay. Did a lot of things. Yes. And one of those things was that you drove from Bakersfield to Durango. Yes. Okay. And uh, you said that you drove in. It was a long drive, right? Yes. You weren't coming from New Mexico. You're coming from oh, Bakersfield. Bakersfield. And you talked about how you brought some guns with you. Yes. And you went shooting with Dylan and Mark. Yeah. Had a good time. That was at his house, right? Up there in Vicedo? In Vicedo, yeah. Yeah. And did Mark um, ever tell you about how the police came out to his house to visit after that? He called me and told me that the – now, when I went out there with the gun, we went and shot in the mountains. Me, him, and Dylan. Mm -hmm. When I was at the house, they went and shot outside. But I went with them. It's all the same trip, though, right? Same trip, but and separate it, places. But it was just the one trip. That's the only time yes. you ever came to visit. Yes. That was in 2011, wasn't it? Like I said, it could be 11 or 12. I, it was 10 years ago, 9 years ago. But the police came out, right? I wasn't there. But Mark called and told you about yes. it? Would it help to look at that police report? Would that refresh your recollection about the year that that occurred? I guess. I never saw anything. He told me that the police came and said that uh, when somebody had shot the neighbor's windows was a 45. So he called me in California and told me that when him and Dylan were shooting outside, I wasn't out there, that they had accidentally shot the windows on the neighbor's house on the side when they were shooting. And that so, was, like, later, right? That was later, like, in November when he called you? I don't remember. The okay, council, page 6239 of discovery. I mean, you may. You take a moment and read this to yourself. Let me know when you're finished. So I was there on Labor Day. Okay. Okay. It refreshes your recollection. It was Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Just let me know when you're finished. Instead of volunteering anything, let me ask you a question for us. Does that re refresh your recollection about the police coming out to Mark's house? What he described? That yes, what he told me. Okay. And what's the year? Can we see the year? Does that refresh your recollection? In eleven. Two thousand eleven, right? Yeah. You actually in 2011, not I said it was 11 or 12. I wasn't sure. Right. But this helps you be more sure, doesn't it? Yeah. And it was 2011. Yeah. Okay. So we're very clear on that now. Yes, and Labor Day. Very That's clear. actually exactly what you told the FBI, right? You told them 2011. I guess I told them to. I don't remember. I never saw the report, and I really don't remember that long ago. And it's a lot of information. So 11, it was 11. It was 11, no question in your mind, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so in 2011, you came, you visited, Dylan was there, and you saw him sleep on the couch, right? Yes. And you said that he was kind of hard to wake up, right? Yes. Uh, and then he would just lay around and just kind of like watch TV and play video games during the day. If we weren't doing something. If he wasn't doing anything, right? If there wasn't an activity or something like that. Yes. Um, and that was normal for him. You were there for four or five days, right? Yes. So you saw that happen more than once. Yes. He was just a typical kid. Just like my son, typical kid. Right, and sometimes he'd go and play with friends, but he'd be back like in an hour or so, right? 
Yeah. And, and you never actually saw him go fishing, right? No. Okay. You just saw him leave and come back, and you know that he had a fishing pole at the house. And he talked about it. He talked about it? Yes. But you never saw it happen? I never, never, actually I didn't pay attention. Okay. But to the best of your memory, you yep. never saw him fish? You said that when you drove in from California, no, scratch that. I'm not even going to bring it up. Never mind. Strike that. Now, out in Bakersfield, you were like in a committed relationship with Mark, right? We were dating. You were dating. Yes. And that was for like six or seven months, right? Yes. Okay. And he wasn't living with you, but he was at your house often. Yes. Is that the best way to describe it? Yes. And you talked a little bit about Elaine Hall, his ex-wife, right? Yes. After you came out for Labor Day in 2011, you never saw Dylan again. No. Did you? You never saw the defendant and Dylan together in the same place, right? Not after that. Not after that. And you, you never even met Elaine Hall, much less saw her with her son. No. You don't really know anything about their relationship. Just what I've been told. And that's all from Mark Redmond. Yes. Yeah. Now, I want to, Council, could you put that photograph back up for me? Oh, yeah. 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 2011, you guys are out barbecuing. And you say you saw Dylan cut himself yes. or something was, like that? Hopefully. I was in the house. You were in the house? Yes. Okay, so you didn't see what happened outside the house. Mark was outside. Dylan was in the house with me. And you saw him come in. He had a, a paper towel on his finger, something like that? No, he cut his finger at the sink in the house. Oh, in the house. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. And he put something, he put a paper towel on it? Is that uh, right? A paper towel or a napkin from the sink, because he was over by the sink, and came over where I was. Right. Sitting right. in the chair on the very end of that last seat. And you said you were, you saw him sitting here? Yeah, I was in the other chair on the other side of him, and he oh. came and sat right next to me. Right here. Oh, okay. No, I was in the on the love seat. Love seat, right? Okay. I was sitting right here. Right here. Oh, great. And you said you saw some drops of blood fall yeah. on the floor? Yeah, you had some in the kitchen too, I'd like that. Okay. And so those would have been kind of along the floor, is that yeah. right? Yeah, going from the kitchen to the living room. Okay. And he never walked over here to the couch at all, did he? No. He sat right? Yeah. So there's no way he would have gotten his blood over here on the couch? No. Right? And he, I know it, he didn't, like, lift up the corner of the rug and drip blood on the floor under the rug, did he? No. And I know it. No. Okay. You never saw him dripping blood on the corner of the coffee table, did you? No. And you didn't see him smearing blood all over the back of the couch with the love seat, did you? No. That's Mischaracterizing evidence, facts not an evidence, objection. I'm asking what she saw, Your Honor. Okay, the smearing I think is probably objectionable, okay? Okay, you never saw him dripping blood anywhere on the love Just seat. on the floor. Just on the floor. He had. He wouldn't, he was holding his hand out, right? He was holding his finger. He was holding his finger. Yeah. Did you see him dripping blood anywhere over here, or was it more on the floor or in the kitchen? It was just on the 
he dripped a couple drops right in front of the love seat, and okay. then it was in the kitchen, okay. and I cleaned it up. Nowhere else? No. Okay. How did you clean it up? Do you remember? Yes, with paper towel. Okay. Just wiped it up? Yes. That was no, uh, Labor Day 2011? Asked and answered. Yes, it was. Now, you said you met twice with the FBI, right? Yes. They came to your house? Yes. And then they came to your house again just a few months later. Or was that a phone call the second time? The Just second. Ask and answer. They came well, twice. Um, no, you can answer the question. Do you remember? Um, they came twice, and um, I don't remember how much the distance it was. They came, two of them. I don't remember their names. They knocked on the okay, door. You don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to oh. you. Okay. They knocked on the door, and then they just came in the entry. And like I said, I had four little ones running around. And they questioned me, and then they left. There was really not a whole lot to it. But they didn't call you before they came, right? No, I had no idea. You had no idea they, they were coming. Knocked on my door. And the first one, that was December 5th, 2012, correct? I don't honestly remember. Okay. But it must have been unusual to get a knock on the door from the FBI. Very unusual. It must have surprised you. It shocked me. Yeah. The FBI's here, right? I didn't think anybody would feel that way, right? And the little kids were screaming, somebody's here, somebody's here. It shocked me. Okay. Well, that, that was the second time, though, right? Both times. Both times. Yes. Okay. And I'm sure you just you invited them in. They stepped into my foyer, and that's as far as they came in. Okay. And you spoke to them, right? Yes. They had questions for you. Yeah. And you were trying to be as helpful as you could. Trying to be as helpful as I could. Yeah. Yeah. You gave them all the information they wanted. I am. They asked. I answered to the best of my knowledge, and that was it. Right. Did you know, and they were asking about Dylan and Mark, right? They asked me if I knew that Dylan was missing, and I said I had heard on the news. And then they asked you about your Labor Day trip? Um, they really didn't ask a whole lot about it. Okay, so you volunteered it then? I told them, well, they asked what it was, but they didn't get into detail. Okay. You told them about when you guys went shooting with the yes. guns. Yes. And you told them about the helmet with the faceplate. Right. Right, and you told them about Dylan and Mark and Dylan sleeping in, right? Yes. You told them about Dylan playing video games. And watching cartoons. Watching cartoons. You gave them as much detail as you possibly could. Right? Yeah. And that was on both occasions. Yes. And you never told them either time that Dylan bled in that house, did you? They didn't ask me. Oh, they didn't I ask didn't, you? I didn't. I'm sorry, but it happened. And I. it just triggered something in my memory. I'm sorry. You told them all those details. Not all. I didn't tell them all the details. I mean, would you like to read their reports? It's pretty I detailed. didn't tell them everything we did. I understand you told them about the shooting when you were shooting the guns. Yes. Right? You told them about Dylan sleeping in. Because they asked me if there was guns. Right. Yes, I took guns with me. You told them all those details, but you never told them anything about bleeding in the house. I. They asked questions, and I answered questions. Did you ever tell them about Dylan no. bleeding? Never. No. You've never. I, this is the problem. Go ahead, Mr. Champagne. Thank you. And this is the first time you've ever told anybody in law enforcement or in a court of law about Dylan bleeding in that house, right? Ask and answered, badgering. This is the first time she's been called to a courtroom on this issue. Um, All right, so you're overruled. You can answer the question. The first uh, time you told anybody in law enforcement? First time anybody had asked. First time anybody had asked. Even though you're trying to help the FBI as much as you could, tell them as much as you knew. Answer their questions the best of my ability. You lost touch with Mark Redwine after the Dr. Phil show, right? Yes. Because after Dylan went missing, you were talking a lot. 
There was an objection as to the form of the question. That, that, would you explain a little bit? Sure. Let me be more specific. And on November 18th and 19th, after that, after Dylan went missing, you were talking with Mark more frequently, right? I talked to him a little bit after the show. Right. And he was you were texting and on the phone with him, right? Just shooting texts back and forth, and I was going through a divorce. Okay. So he and was just my sounding board. Right. And he actually gave your name and phone number to law enforcement to be a character reference for him, right? I don't know. That I don't know. He gave your name and phone number to Dr. Phil show to come and talk on Dr. Phil on his behalf. Uh, objection. So, uh, what's, what's, what's your objection? I, I think double hearsay. What Mr. Redwine is communicating to other people uh, about Ms. Alexander and anything she would be in a position to know. I do question how she would know that. So you might want to lay a foundation. Okay. Dr. Phil show called you up out of the blue and invited you to be on the show, testify on Mark Redwine's behalf, right? Not to testify, just to come and support him. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. A poor choice of words, excuse me. You didn't call them yourself, did you? No. Right. So you went on the Dr. Phil show. Yes. And you were there on behalf of Mark Redwine. Objection asked and answered. I, I let it slide the first time, but asking it in this way is a problem. It's been asked the exact same question. All right. You, you can uh, answer the question. Yes. You were there I on went to support him, yes. To support him. And while you were on the Dr. Phil show, you were confronted about sending Facebook messages to Elaine Hall and Corey Redwine, right? Yes, but I didn't. But you didn't? No. They said that they had the Facebook yeah. messages. Actually, well, I never spoke. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Mr. Uh, <coughs> campaign? That's fine, Judge. I, was, I can rephrase the question. Well, that may not get you where you need to go, but let's <laughs> see. You were confronted about that and denied it, right? Yes. The, the confronting part, move, move to strike, that would require somebody else saying something to her out of court, someone else being the declarant, mm -hmm. and, and her response to it. So, but that's not hearsay, Mr. <laughs> That is not hearsay. We talked about it, I don't know, more than once. Well, so, out of court statement, and, and the declarant was confronting her, and, and that's my objection. And then there's the response, which is why it's being asked. So it's the overrule. Go ahead, Mr. Champagne. Thank you, Judge. You were there to profess his innocence, right? Yes, I don't believe he did it. Still to this day? Yes. But you weren't there in 2012, right? No. You don't know anything about Dylan and Mark's relationship and other than Labor Day 2011 from your own experience. Yes. Right? You don't know about how their relationship was deteriorating in the summer and fall 2012? You know, I don't know that you go there. She knows about 2011. Okay. When you were on the Dr. Phil show, you didn't mention any bloodletting by Dylan in the house at that time, did you? I never got talked to on the Dr. Phil show. That's not the question. Did you did you bring no. that information forward? No. Nobody no. asked. Nobody asked. So you have no idea what happened in 2012. That's Objection. That's the stage. I mean, right. he, she already said she doesn't know what happened. She wasn't there. Okay. And after 2012, after Dylan went missing, you said you just heard about this a little bit on the news, right? Yes. Were you aware that after Dylan arrived at Mark's house on November 18th, he was never heard from again? I, all I can... aware of that, ma'am. Yes, no. How was she supposed to be aware of that? She said she watched the news. Well, so what? So then it's coming through hearsay at that point. Right? Judge, but the point is her knowledge and whether she brings that to the table here or she's testifying. Yeah, I'm not going to let you do that. That's not right. 
when the defendant and defense counsel, I should say, contacted you, that was after Mark Redwine had been arrested, right? Yes. And they had... Objection is to relevance. Of course he had been arrested before defense counsel was involved. I seem to agree with that. <laughs> Judge, if you'll allow me, I'm, I don't have a lot of questions on the topic. I just want to clarify. Well, we'll see. I'll let you ask the next one. But okay. I, I, I'm tending to agree with the defense right now. Right. And they... Did they invite you for an interview? The defense? Yeah. No. They never did? No. They never interviewed you prior to today? Yesterday. Yesterday. The day before. The day before. And that's the first time you ever brought up Dylan bleeding in the living room. Is that right? Yes. To anyone? Uh, I talked to my mom about it. This is asked and answered repeatedly. No, this is a little bit different. And this is so she talked to her mom about it. I talked to my mom about it. I talked to my son about it. Um, so you knew it was important. Huh? You knew it was something important. It was relevant. I didn't. I didn't know it was that important. I really didn't. Okay. I don't. You never brought it up to law enforcement in the nine years since this happened. That's been asked and answered. Okay. Uh, that's incredible. Ms. Alexander, when the bleeding happened in the living room, was that something that was specifically asked of you, or did you volunteer it to when you were discussing these things with the defense? I counsel? volunteered it. Right. You didn't so the, the, the first person to bring up anything related to blood, who was that? Me. Um, it seemed like you wanted to clear up why there could be some confusion, confusion by some police officers or FBI agents about your name. Are there three names? I, I've only known you as Ms. Yes. Alexander. I was married Karen Lee Kennedy. Well, I was Karen Lee Ovar, married Karen Lee Kennedy, got a divorce, married Karen Lee Alexander, then was going back to Kennedy. And instead of going back to Kennedy and changing everything, I stayed Alexander. It was too much trouble. Do you have a Facebook account? Yes. Objection beyond the scope of relevance. The question was whether she reached out by Facebook to anybody. Yes, I do. Okay, you can't. Uh, it's okay, but next time let me oh, okay, say something. Sorry. Okay, I was thinking. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. I know you don't understand how this works. Go ahead. And yes, I have one. Okay. What's your What's your Facebook handle, or what, what do you go by on Facebook? My name on Facebook is Karen Ovar Alexander. And did you ever use a Facebook account that was yours? Did you ever at any point reach out to anybody by Facebook involved in this case? No, never. And I, I beg your pardon, because I think that the way I asked the question suggested it was 2011. Now that you've seen, or 2012. That's on me. It, it sounds like now that you've seen that police report and, and that there was discussion of the shooting the weapon, are you confident it was 2011? Yes. So apologies. That mistake is on me. Your memory is clear now? Yes. No. <clears throat> so I didn't need to strike that entire colloquy. It's totally inappropriate. You know what? You could have objected before it all came out. Couldn't you what was going on? <laughs> Just so in motion. It's in again. You saw what happened. You decide what happened. His his statements are not evidence, just like mine are. Mr. Shane Payne's not. Okay. Ms. Alexander, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. All right. Any questions from the jury? Looks like we have at least one. Alexander, did you ever hike or ride uh, ATVs? Well, well, let me back this up. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's some mountains there. Do you know the name Middle Mountain? Do you know where that is? Yes. Yeah. If, if 
I'm right. It's at the end of the road where Mark lived because we. That, that was my question. I yeah. just wanted to make sure you knew what it yes. was. Yes. Okay. Did you ever hike or ride ATVs up Middle Mountain with Mark and Dylan? Yes, we did. We walked actually one day. We hiked up the road and through the campground and up the mountain a little bit. And then we walked around and came back down. And approximately how much time did you spend doing that hike? Uh, a remember? couple hours, I agree. Uh, any follow up, Mr. Moran? No, Your Honor, thank you. Mr. Uh, Champagne? Yes. Yeah. You walked north from Mark's house to the little campground, right? Yeah, out the front door and to the left. To the left. And then you went out to the little campground there. Yes. Yeah. At the end we of the walk road. through the campground and then up the trail. And it's a trail, right? Like a yeah. traditional trail. Yes. Yeah. I showed you a map. Do you think you'd recognize it? I don't know. I just know we walked up there. I couldn't breathe. Couldn't breathe. <laughs> it was too high altitude. Let me ask you like this. You didn't walk up through the steep cliffs that were there, too. No, we walked up and in a little ways and then around and then came back down. Okay. Not a long way. Nothing to you. Okay. Can this one speak, please? Yes, thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you're free to go. Thank you. And how long is your next witness going to be? I expect some time, Your Honor. All right. Um, because I don't want to go for more than two hours at a time, we'll take another recess. Um, remember my admonitions about not talking to each other. Uh, we'll start off again at 3.30. Everybody rise from the Okay, we'll be in recess.